Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again. As always, thanks for watching my channel. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit of a rainy day. I'm coming with the memes. Oh my God, it's so wet out here with the memes. It's just water. It's cold and it's wet. You're not gonna touch a baby doll? Why not? This is what you wanted to do. up on the motorcycle so it can dry. Daddy needs to take his arm too. Oh. Now I need to take a bath. <laughs> yeah. It feels like we just took a bath though, doesn't it? I thought that's why I sent you guys outside so you could shower with the free water instead of wasting my water. Oh god. Okay, Daddy's gonna hang his jacket up too. They had to get Okay, you have your fun? Mm -hmm. Let mommy get you into some nice warm clothes now and dry you off. And I did get a question from a friend of ours, Mr. Snap Mac, who wanted to know a little bit about um, multimeter or digital volt ohm meter or circuit tester basics. He really wanted to know some of the basics, functions, how to uh, adjust the settings to be able to test for like a bad light or bad wiring or something of that nature. He just really uh, needed a kind of a tutorial video on how to kind of break it down as far as what settings you typically want to be on depending on what it is that you're wanting to test. So I thought it would make for an interesting video and what I wanted to test was uh, a bad bulb in comparison to a brand new bulb and what you would be looking for on that. We'll also cover how to test your test leads, how to test the inline fuse, we'll lightly compare high and low end uh, DVOMs and talk about that and some of the differences, at least things that I've noticed. And I'll show you some other circuit testers that you might run into in the automotive field. The DVOM over here to my left is made by Klein Tools. You can usually find these at Home Depot for about $60 to $70. The DVOM to my right is made by Snap-on Tools. It's a true RMS and you can usually find these for pretty hot deals on eBay or you can get them on promo sometimes from the Snap-on Tool Distributor. I will put links down in the description for you guys as far as pricing for either one of these go to give you a better idea. Both of these are auto ranging and both of these can be used in the automotive application. I will show you the features that are most commonly associated with electrical troubleshooting in automotive but first let's cover some of the key basics as far as what you'll be using on this platform. So on this DVOM the I would say there are three settings that you're most likely to use within automotive. Uh, one is going to be, and I'll just use this one as an example, uh, volts DC. Volts DC, you can tell because it looks kind of like a, uh, it looks kind of like the markings you would find out on the road. So that's direct current and will be one of your most used uh, settings on the DVOM when you're testing or you're doing electrical troubleshooting on a car. The second most utilized feature will be ohms. You can see it's already out of limits. And it is covered by this little tiny omega symbol here. The third setting which you might find yourself using, and it might be a little bit different for you. You could be anywhere between milliamps or amps. So I would say one of these two settings if you wanted to include them. But if you're checking for an amperage draw, uh, you would use one of these two settings depending on how big of a draw you believe you might have. Some of the other features that are nice on here would be like millivolt, but since it is auto ranging, 
Now this is uh, alternating current, but you also have alternating voltage as well. The, some of the other settings that are kind of cool is like temperature, though Snap-on did not include the temperature probe with this specific DVOM. However, Klein did, and it's pretty cool and universal, one size fits all. This will work on the Snap-on as well as the Klein, so if you want to save a few bucks, what you'll do with this is you'll look down here and you'll notice where it says temperature and com. You would take your temperature probe and plug it into the two there and then rotate the analog all the way over to temperature. And you'll see it's picking up about a 61, 62 degrees in the garage. And that's coming from this little end here on the end of the probe. So that would be how the temperature setting works. Let's get into how to test your test leads to see if you have an issue because sometimes things can jump around. So the most two common ports that you're gonna be using on this uh, DVOM is gonna be the common ground, which is where your black test lead often goes, and the voltage or ohm setting over here. If you're testing for amps, of course you would leave the black one on com and you would simply move this over to amps and you can test amperage. We'll get into that here in a minute. But for right now let's go back to com. Now if we go to volts DC, you'll see we're all over the place. We have things occurring like frequency of lights, we have the uh, radio towers, we've got power antennas, things of that nature. So there's going to be some noise, so the DVOM can't just pick it up until it has some kind of direct path. So we're going to connect the two test leads now, like so. We'll see if things settle down to a ground voltage, which would ideal would be complete zeros but you may get a little bit here and there. You can wiggle your leads back and forth to see if there's anything occurring within them, maybe like a fray, frayed wire or something that got bent or pinched that might be causing a different reading or a weird reading. Another way that you can test your test leads is by going to resistance. This is all user preference. You don't have to do both. You can do one way or the other. Some people prefer to test their leads on resistance because um, I'm assuming it's because this is more practical and it's going to give you the best measurement. So ideal again would be complete zeros. When you have break a break in the circuit you're going to be out of limits. Okay so in order to test the inline fuse uh, which would be for your amperage here we'll move this over to we can go to amps, we can go to milliamps, I don't think it really matters, uh, but for the meantime we'll just set it on amps. You'll take one end of your test lead and you'll put it on the com or common ground. You'll take the probe end and you'll simply just insert it like so. If you had some kind of amperage going through here or a break in your fuse, you'd probably have some kind of reading on here. But because we have one complete circuit, no amps running through it, it's safe to say that the internal fuse is okay. So that's how you would test the internal fuse on your DVOM. In case you're afraid that you might have popped the fuse and that's why your DVOM is acting so erratic. Alright, now we'll go ahead and plug the test leads back in. And we will go to resistance. We will then thread our alligator clip back onto our positive test lead here. I'm going to start off with the brand new bulb and we're going to be checking the resistance of this dual filament bulb, backup bulb, turn signal bulb. 
I'll put one test lead that covers both sides of the bulb as well as the ground. So you'll see with our new bulb we have about two, two ohms of resistance. We'll now hook up the burnt bulb that we recently took out of our Mercury Mariner. So we got about one ohm roughly. Playing with the Klein here for a moment. When you first turn it on, it automatically goes to an alternating voltage. So what we would like to do is press select and that will take us to volts DC. You can see the, the little road right there. Again, if you wanted to go to ohms, you just switch over to ohms and it's already set up. You can do the same thing we did with this snap-on. When the circuit's complete, the Klein DVOM will let you know with an audible tone. Both the Klein and the Snap-on have a min-max setting. They both have a range setting. The cost is astronomically different. The only feature that I prefer with the Snap-on over the Klein is the digital display screen. It may make it easy for someone that has trouble seeing or that may be colorblind to go with something a little bit more geared towards the Klein or the Snap-on. It's, it's usually user preference. I do like the display screen on the Snap-on over the Klein. One other feature that is a little bit bothersome with the Klein DVOM is that the uh, the alligator probes simply just stab on and half the time when I'm trying to connect them it's all over the place and I don't feel like I'm getting a good connection so it gives me a bad reading so um, these uh, alligator clamps are pretty much junk but you can purchase different test leads and I'll try to see if I can't find some good deals for you guys and put them down in the description a Another circuit tester that you're going to often use in automotive is known as a test light or a scope on a rope as Eric O would say. This one happens to be a Craftsman but OTC makes the exact same one which I happen to love and enjoy. It's at work. I'm using this one as an example. The reason why I like it is because again the same purpose as the alligator clips on the Snap-on DVOM is that it is actually has an alligator clip that is threaded on to the test light. The second thing I like about this one more is it's smaller so I can get into tighter spots and the end of the probe is very sharp so you can if you wanted to you don't have to you could very easily pierce the insulation of a wire to test or very easily get underneath a butt connector to test and very easily get into the top of the fuses to test the little metal dealios there. So if you are testing for a bad fuse and you wanted to see, boom, boom, no big deal. Let me see if I have a nine volt battery. So we have one end hooked up to the ground side of this nine volt battery and if you were to test the fuse in the same manner, the little bulb lights up. Another well-loved tool in the automotive field would be this Power Probe 3. I see, uh, I've seen quite a few techs fall in love with this and have this replace their test light, though I have heard a lot of other technicians say that nothing can ever replace the test light, not even the Power Probe 3. And that may very well be true. There are certain things that you want to test with a uh, test light, and there are certain things that you would want to test with the Power Probe 3. But let me show you how this whole setup works if you've never seen it before. On one end of this 9 volt battery we will connect our 
ground clamp if I can keep it all together here. And on the other end we will hook up our positive clamp. Alright, so if you were hooked up to a 12 volt battery, this is how you would hook them up. One ground, one positive. With the test probe you have LED lights and at the other end you can use the probe to find your ground, find your hot, and if absolutely necessary, supply 9 volts or 12 volts, supply a ground if you need to supply a ground. Pretty useful, handy tool. Like I said, a lot of automotive techs love this thing. And it can be a, a lifesaver if you're trying to roll a customer's window up and say that there was a problem in the switch, you could bypass that. But I don't recommend doing that unless you know what you're doing because you can fry a circuit with this bad boy. Our last circuit tester that I'm going to share with you today, some of you guys may never have seen this, and this was before my time, but not by very much, but a close friend of mine, Mr. Johnny, actually gave this to me. He was a Chrysler certified master tech, Viper certified tech, you name it, he was certified to do it, but he earned this in 1982, how it works, and I hope it still works, I think it does. You flip that on, a little red light of doom comes on. If you put this in series, so if you are testing uh, for resistance of a certain circuit, one of the very first audible resistance testers that they made during that time frame. This is before the auto ranging Klein. This is before the snap-on, this is before the power probe, this is before... This is right there with the test light, man. This is right there with the test light, so... <clears throat> Alright guys, well that'll pretty much wrap up my video for this weekend. Look, my uh, intent was to try to help Snap Mac out, try to give him a better understanding of some of the features, functions, and uh, differences on settings, and how to test certain things with the DVOM. But if it helped you out, great, I'm glad. Give it a thumbs up if it did. If it didn't, give it a thumbs down. Share if you wanna share. I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. We'll see you next time. Deuces.